Well, I want to welcome you to our 12 noon prayer and fasting meeting. Uh, we're glad that you've joined us. Wala naman tayong ibang pupuntahan, so I'm glad that you're here. We actually started praying and fasting uh, last Thursday. We had a noon time and a 7 p.m. So I hope that since you're already here for our noon time meeting, uh, you'll join us also in the 7 p.m. I want ko kung meron kayong appointment. Uh, nasa bahay naman tayo. So I hope we uh, take some time uh, to pray and fast uh, for our nation. And that's what we're doing right now. Uh, we're praying for our nation. We're praying for uh, the welfare of uh, all those who are in the front line, making sure that uh, we cover them in prayer. Because ngayon lahat ng pinaghahawakan natin, uh, parang na, nawala lahat yung the things that we hope for. But, but as we continue to pray, we can seek God's will. And we know, we know that God is faithful amen and so as we as we uh, start our prayer meeting we will do, have a time of worship but before that i just want to encourage you from the uh, from the scriptures jeremiah 29 verse 7 but seek the welfare of the city where i have sent you into exile and pray to the lord on its behalf for in its welfare you will find your welfare now we're not in exile just like the nation of Israel. But it feels that way. Uh, parang na, na tayo sa mga bahay natin. But here's the interesting part of what Jeremiah was trying to uh, impart to these exiles. Kasama dyan si Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, the elite of the elites. And what he was challenging them to do is to uh, live this, uh, life as usual. Okay? And the important part here, he was saying, you pray for the welfare of where I have placed you. God has placed us in this time, in this place, and so as we pray and seek God, we're aligning ourselves to His will. And so, uh, yan yung gusto natin mangyari. And so as we pray do during this noontime and pray this evening, that's what we're praying for every single day, praying for our nation and the welfare of our city. Amen? Can you join me in a word of prayer before we start our worship? Heavenly Father, I pray that instead of fear, we will respond in faith. Instead of the pressures that we're feeling of, of the different trials and the difficulties, I pray, Lord, that we will seek your provision. We will seek your peace in our lives. And ultimately, Lord, instead of worry, instead of concerns and problems that we're faced with, I pray, Lord, that instead of worry, we will worship you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Join us as we pray this afternoon. Everlasting Father, every brand new day it's you I see. I'm in constant wonder. Every breath.
wrap us in your embrace washed by your blood covered by your grace invade every heart wrap us in your
I say Always, always there Always, always there Lord, we thank you that you are always good. Thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful in the morning. You are faithful in the evening. And you are faithful every single moment in our lives. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to have this opportunity that we could still worship you amidst everything that is happening around us. That, Lord, we could gather together online and give honor and give praise to you. Lord, I pray that even as we go through this prayer and fasting, Lord, we humbly seek your face. We humbly look to you. We humbly ask, God, that you would continue to speak and touch our hearts. Lord, we thank you, God. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon. We're glad to have you on our day two of our prayer and fasting. Uh, we said um, last week that we'll do this in the next um, three Thursdays. This is our second Thursday doing this together and we'll end our prayer and fasting next Thursday. And we pray that um, God has been speaking to you and we also pray that um, you are uh, maximizing your time working from home, being fruitful and being productive. Um, at the same time, um, enjoying your time with your family, uh, but most importantly, you connecting with God. And we said um, last week that in the next three weeks, we'll go through the book of Psalms. And Pastor Patrick started the, our prayer and fasting by talking about Psalm 46. And he encouraged us to really look to God and be still and trust that wherever we're in, God is still in control. Now, this afternoon, um, we'll look at Psalm 136. We'll go through um, the 26 verses, but we won't be able to read everything. So as we begin, will you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you for this afternoon. Thank you, Lord God, that we could gather together online and still, still hear um, a message from you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would prepare us. I pray that you would touch our hearts. I pray, God, that you would encourage us this afternoon. Lord, we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Psalm 136 is a Thanksgiving psalm. And the author wrote this because he recognized God's goodness over his life. And for us to be able to um, understand it better, or at least para lang may handle tayo, um, I broke down the message into three parts. So, um, I broke it down by using three words that starts with the letter R. So, three R's po yung, ano natin, yung, yung lesson natin for this afternoon. So, the first R is the word repeat. Now, it's very important for us today to repeat something because many people forget um, things easily, just like me. Hindi ko alam kung kayo din, madali kayo makalimot. But things has to be repeated over and over and over again so that um, I'll be able to remember, I'll be able to understand. And speaking of um, repeating something, for the last few weeks, um, the last few days, you've been hearing the word COVID-19. And the last time I, I checked, over 2 billion times, the word um, coronavirus was mentioned. And every time that word comes out, People are in fear, people become anxious, people become worried, and you, you can't blame them because sa, sa lahat ng nangyayari sa paligid nila every time they watch the news, every time they read the newspaper, or every time they open their social media, that's something that is being repeated over and over and over again. You see how it affects people now, people are panicking, people are hoarding things, and Every single day, hindi, hindi natin naiiwasan marinig yung word na COVID-19 na yan. But the author, the psalmist, is encouraging us to repeat something else. It's not COVID-19, but let me bring you to the scripture or to the psalm that we read um, or that we looked at a while ago. Now, the author, the psalmist, in four verses, talks about the importance or at least he mentioned 
that we are to give thanks to God. Verse 1, He tells us to give thanks to the Lord. Verse 2, He tells us to give thanks to the God of gods. Verse 3 take, um, tells us to give thanks to the Lord of lords. And in verse 26, He again repeated it and He said, Give thanks to the God of heavens. Now, when I was reading this, I was really encouraged because um, where we are today, it's hard to um, appreciate everything that is around us. Asa bahay ka lang, you're stuck at home, you want to go out, but you can't. And sometimes, you, you feel helpless or you feel limited because you feel like you, you're not accomplishing a lot of things. And people are complaining, people are mad, people are furious with what's happening. But this is a good reminder for us that despite where we are today, meron tayong pwedeng pagpasalamatan sa Panginoon. Maybe you are at home today, um, you are with your family members, that's something to thank God for. Maybe you are away from them, but yet because of technology, madali mo silang nakakausap, madali mo silang nakakamusta. It's something to thank God for. There are countless reasons for us to thank God for today. We may not appreciate the things around us, but when you look at it, and dami talaga natin pwedeng pagpasalamatan sa Panginoon. And aside from that, I guarantee you that there is one thing na pwede nating ipagpasalamat. Ay, yun ay kung sino ang Panginoon sa buhay natin. God has been so faithful to you. God has been so faithful to me. And God will always be faithful to us. And I pray that wherever we are today, we'll be able to give thanks to Him no matter what we face. Because when we give thanks to Him, we don't just give thanks to Him because of the good things that we are experiencing, but we give thanks to Him because He is a good God. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Lord of the heavens. He is the Lord of everything that we're in today. And there is another thing that the psalmist repeated. It's not just giving thanks to God, but for 26 times, in every verse, in Psalm 136, the author repeated to uh, that the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. Could you imagine? All 26 verses, he mentioned that. The steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. I like the NLT version. The NLT tells us that His faithful love endures forever. The NASB tells us for His loving kindness is everlasting. And think about that for a moment. In, in, when, when you read that over and over and over again, the, the author was emphasizing that the love of God endures forever. That His faithful love is everlasting. That His loving kindness lasts a lifetime. And when I was studying this word, the original meaning came from the word hesed. And when you look at the meaning of that, it talks about, or it's always associated to God's covenant loyalty to His people. Meaning to say, if we are the children, we are God's children today, and He is in covenant relationship with us, and because we are in covenant relationship with God, His love, His mercy, His loving kindness is with us. And the Bible tells us that it will endure forever. Now, I like one of the scholars, or at least the commentaries that I read. Ito yung sinabi niya, that this word was so rich. Itong hesed, yung, yung, yung loving kindness, yung love, yung mercy, yung binabasa natin kanina. He said that this word was very powerful, it's so rich. This is how he phrased this. Sabi niya, even our best description falls short of the full meaning of this word. That's how powerful that word is. People try to describe it. People try to put it in words. But when you look at His love, His kindness, His mercy, our words will never fully explain that great love that God has for us. In Psalm 136, in every verse, He repeated that. The steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. So, ano yung tinuturo sa atin ng Bible niyo? It means that in every situation that we face, His steadfast love endures forever. So in our present reality today, in this COVID-19 pandemic, His steadfast love will endure forever. 
And that's something that we need to declare and repeat over and over and over again. We repeat His steadfast love. We repeat thanking Him all the days of our life. In verse 4 of Psalm 136, it says, To Him who alone does great wonders, Again, he said this, for his steadfast love endures forever. And this scripture talks about the God who does great wonders, not just for them, but even for us today. So our second R for this afternoon is the word recount. I like this word because it talks about looking back or remembering or glancing at the past and taking down notes or um, appreciating what God has done. And the psalmist did that. Now, let me read to you Psalm 136, verses 10 and 11. He, says, he, he, he said it here, To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, for his steadfast love endures forever. That's verse 10. Verse 11, he said, And brought Israel out from among them, for his steadfast love endures forever. So the psalmist looked back. He looked back at the history of the nation. He looked back at the, 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 the history of Israel, how they were enslaved for 400 years. But the God that loves them so much rescued them from slavery and freed them. And, I, and that's very encouraging for us today because God is not just, God is not done working. God continuously works even in our lives and even in our nation today. So the author was recounting. And then he moved on. He said, yes, God rescued them. Uh, he, he freed them from slavery. But you know the story. Pharaoh changed his mind. <laughs> he nabbled ni, ni, ni Pharaoh and together with his people, the, the, the nation, the, the Israelites, Moses was there. And the psalmist said, Again, he recounted, sabi niya, to him who divided the Red Sea. We're all familiar of that story. When, when Moses lifted up his, 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 his staff, the, the sea was split into two. The nation started to walk. They, begin to, they, they began to walk there. And by the grace of God, they were able to cross the other side. And this is what happened. He said it here, and made Israel pass through it. And he said, but overthrew Pharaoh and his host. So the nation of Israel, were, they, they were saved because God was with them. And the author was recounting that. The author was remembering that moment where God rescued them. And you see, that's really a great encouragement for us today because the same God that rescued them in the past is the same God that can rescue us today. Maybe you're worried today. Maybe you're panicking as well today. But let me tell you this. God is still at work in your lives right now. And He is not yet done with you. And I pray that you will continue to hold on to Him and trust and believe in Him. That He has the same power that is at work in us today. Recount. Many people right now, they're busy doing a lot of things. Daming nagti-tiktok, nakikita natin sa social media because people are bored, but I would encourage you. i like to encourage you to begin recounting the good things that God has done for you. Maybe start writing it down. Maybe start to journal it. Maybe start um, writing it down in your notebook. Put it on your wall so that you can remember the things that God has done for you. And lastly, rely. Psalm 136 verse 16, it says here, to him who led his people through the wilderness, for his steadfast love endures forever. And again, this was the author, the psalmist recounting the history of the nation. And he said, to him who led his people through the wilderness. And when you talk about the story, or when you remember that story, yes, the, the whole nation of Israel went through 40 years in the wilderness because of their disobedience. But you see, Si Lord hindi pa rin sila pinabayaan. The presence of God was with them. God's presence was there even in the wilderness. I don't know if you remember the story when when God had that um, cloud by day and fire by night to guide the nation. His presence was there even in the wilderness. 
That's why for us today, we can rely on God because His presence is with us today. And when you look at that story, His protection was with them. Even in the wilderness, si Lord pinrotektahan pa rin yung mga tao. Let me read to you Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 15. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land, with its, ven- with its venomous snakes and scorpions. You see, God was there with them. God protected them. And I believe the same God that protected them is the same God that can protect us today. Trust God that no weapon formed against you will prosper, that no sickness will come near you, nor your family members, because His protection is with you. And lastly, rely on God's provision. In the same wilderness, the people of Israel experienced God's provision. You remember the story of the manna and the quail when God encouraged them to store up just enough for the day and not hoard, not to gain more, but for them to get what's just enough for them because God was teaching them to depend on Him daily. And I pray that even in this season, our security will not come from the things that we have, from the food that we have in our fridge or from from the the, from the money that we have in our bank accounts. But I pray that our security would come from God Himself. That wherever we are today, He could still provide for you. We rely on God's presence, we rely on God's protection, and we rely on God's provision. And lastly, as I end, I want to read Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 5. And this is God reminding them of what He has done for them. And this is what it says. I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals have not have not worn off your feet. And I pray that this message would boost your faith, that God will not leave us, that God will not forsake us, that the same God that the nation of Israel had before is the same God that we have today for 40 years hindi sila pinabayaan ng Panginoon and for us we pray that it will not reach 40 years we pray that this is this will end soon but as we are still here in this quarantine trust and believe that God is with you and God can protect you let's repeat let's recount and let's continue to rely on God. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you because you are a good father. Thank you, Lord God, because in this time, we know that you are with us. In this season, we know that you are providing for us. In this crisis, we know that your presence is with us. So Lord, I thank you, God, that we could be secured in that idea na kasama ka namin. Tutulungan mo kami. Hindi mo kami pababayaan. So Lord, I pray for your people today. I pray for your children today. Thank you, Lord God, for those people who are restless, for those people who are uh, in fear right now, for those people who are lacking in faith. I pray, God, that you would touch their hearts right now and remind them that your steadfast love endures forever. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Why don't we continue to worship God? You are good Always You are good There's nothing that my heart wants more than
Pastor JC mentioned today, we will be praying for God's presence, provision, and protection in the midst of our world's current situation. If you're with your family, I encourage you to come together as we start to pray for God's presence to be evident in our nation, in our government, even in your home, and in every sector of our society. We're going to give you two minutes. Go ahead and pray with your family. join me in a word of prayer please bow down your head and close your eyes lord jesus we come to you today and just like in psalms 23 verse 4 it says there even though i walk through the valley of shadow of death i will fear no evil for indeed you are with me your rod and your staff comfort me lord jesus thank you for your very presence that is with us today. Thank you for your very presence that will bring comfort and peace in our heart. Thank you, Lord, for your very presence that brings hope and light in our situation right now. Thank you, Jesus, that your very presence will always guide us and will strengthen us and will lead us. Thank you, Jesus, that we do not have to be afraid. We do not have to fear because your very presence, we will find rest we will find refuge indeed in your presence there is fullness of joy thank you jesus for our time of prayer this afternoon in jesus name we pray amen and amen we will be praying for protection if you're with your family i'll give you a minute or two just to pray for one another
join me as we declare Psalm 121 for our family. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. We declare protection over our family. You're going to be our strong tower, our ever-present help in times of need, that we will not worry about any diseases, any sickness, because you are the God who will protect us. In Jesus' name, Amen. We will now be praying for God's provision. But before we pray, let me encourage you with God's word first. It says here in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. It says, My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. You know, in a season like this, it's very important that we come together and join our faith in believing that God really is our ultimate source and our provider. Why don't you go ahead and pray? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace today with humility and surrender. God, we appropriate that verse over our situation that indeed you will supply every single thing we need according to your glorious riches. So God, I come to you today asking you to provide for your people. God, we thank you that amidst the enhanced community quarantine, God, your power to provide is not in a lockdown. Lord, that you will meet the needs of every single person here. Lord, I thank you for the families that are under your Lordship. God, I lift to you up the heads of the families, Lord, even those who are self-sustaining. God, if there's any panic in them, Lord, if there's any fear, if there's any fear of lack, Lord, we arrest that in the name of Jesus Christ and we replace it with faith and with comfort that only comes from you. God, I pray that you will remind your people today to worry about nothing because you are in full control. God, also this season, I lift to you up the employees that if there's any fear to, Lord, if there's any sense of trouble, if they have troubled minds, 
God, I thank you because you will meet them wherever they're at. And God, you will miraculously remind us and show before our eyes that the provision that we need is not based in the job that we do. It's not based in our companies. It's not based even in the government. But God, all the good things that we need are according to who you are and what you can do. So God, thank you even in that psalm where you remind your people that you will not allow the righteous to be forsaken or his children beg for food. Lord, I thank you that in you we will never beg. Lord, in you we will never go hungry. Lord, in you, even the bills that we worry about, Lord, it's already well provided for in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you because the provision that we need is not under the mercy of anybody, Lord, but it's under your Lordship. It's under your power. It's under your grace and your mercy. It's under your love. And it's right in your hands. Lord, we thank you. We claim that provision today. Lord, we put our faith and our hope in you that you will miraculously provide for your people in ways only you can. So God, increase our faith. Make our security stand firm in you. Lord, we lift you up. We honor you even at this season. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that was a powerful time. Thank you very much for joining us. And I pray that you will join us again uh, this evening at 7 p.m. as we continue to pray and fast, seeking God's will. I truly believe uh, that God heard us. God heard our prayers. And just like what Pastor JC said, whatever we find ourselves in, whatever situation uh, that we are faced with, when we remember who God is, then uh, we can get through the season. We are going to get through the season. And we can always remember that God's steadfast love will endure forever. Whatever situation you find, you can keep declaring, God's steadfast love will endure forever. Now, I shared earlier about Jeremiah 29 to pray for the welfare of our city and to pray to God that God will meet us. And what it, what's interesting in this verse is what follows. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 is the famous verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope that you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. That's God's promise. He's going to restore things. He's going to bring us back. We have a future. We have a hope. We have good plans and a welfare that He has in store for us. So that's what we can continue to pray for. Now, uh, if you're new here in Victory, uh, we want to pray for you. Uh, whatever situation that you find yourself, we want ask the church to pray together with you. And so we have a link provided where you can write down uh, your prayer request and we will try very hard to getting in touch with you and praying with you individually and once the lockdown is over we look forward to meeting you as well god bless you and we'll see you tonight